Parents, let's talk about Miralax constipation and some of the concerns that I hear from you all so, so frequently. Listen, no parent wants to give their kid a medication. We would all prefer that our kids not need them and not take them if that were possible, but that is especially true when it comes to Miralax because there's even more concerning and even more damaging side effects that can come. Uh, there's actually, I think it used to be called Moms Against Miralax, now it's Parents Against Miralax concerned with this active ingredient in Miralax. There's a Facebook group that has almost 84,000 members talking about these concerns and talking about some of the things they've seen with their kids and what some of the other solutions are. And that's what this video is about. This is gonna be one that you want to share with a friend, share with somebody that you know is struggling with this issue because I promise they're gonna thank you for giving them some solutions and some help. Uh, this is a little bit more of a deeper issue because it's one that we've seen kids really have big time struggles with. Um, back in 2014, which is actually what I got a little printout of here, this article, there's a study done and there was a, a big news report that came out on CBS about a significant number of side effects emotional psychiatric concerns that were happening in kids who were taking Miralax. And that sparked a lot of different thoughts and a lot of different changes. And a lot of people don't realize that Miralax isn't even approved by the FDA for kids under 14 years old. So we have so many concerns, so many issues with what's going on with this, um, which might strike you as con uh, confusing if this is new to you because it seems like not that complicated of a thing right it's just trying to get water into the gi system water into that digestive tract to keep stool softer and keep it moving faster but it turns out the ingredient that it does that with the way that it goes about doing that is a very unnatural way it's a very synthetic artificial means of doing that which is leading to all of these concerns and all of these side effects for kids so Yes, we really don't like any medication for kids because it's not really addressing the cause, but especially this one with some of the big, big concerns as far as the side effects that are on top of it. So what is the answer then? Because we do need to address the why. We do need to address the cause if our kids are struggling with this. And we know that it's not a deficiency of Miralax, a deficiency of some sort of stool softener that is at the root of constipation. It's gotta be something else. There's really three causes that we see. First one, you could think of as nutritional or food sensitivity, food intolerances for. That's where parents start so frequently, right? We gotta get more fiber, we gotta drink more water, we gotta get our prune juice in, and all the other little tricks and tidbits that maybe you've come across online, and those things can be a huge factor. They can make a huge difference. Of course, what we fuel our bodies with matters, right? This isn't a newsflash to anybody. Um, but to be honest, most of the people that we meet, most of the ones who are starting Carrot Thrive and coming in here, they've checked that box already, right? They've been down that road and they've made dietary changes. Maybe some as just a basic level of, let's try to get a little bit more healthy stuff in our diet. Let's try to um, make sure we're getting some of those fibrous foods or you're adding in the prune juice or adding in some of those natural laxative or others that we meet have gone all the way through more intensive blood testing and they've done food allergy and food sensitivity screenings and they've completely eliminated maybe dairy, maybe gluten, maybe other triggers that they found for their kid, but they're still struggling. They're still dealing with some sort of concerns and some sort of issues. Regardless of where you're at, that piece of it can make a big difference. So that's one. Step two, or the second possible cause, would be neurological issues. And I'm gonna add in three and then explain two here. Three could just be both, right? A combination of both neurological stresses and the GI system, food intolerances, food sensitivities, and on and on. But what's that neuro one? What's that neuro blockage look like? Since our digestive system is regulated through the nervous system, if that part is disconnected or not functioning as it's supposed to, that can be at the root of these things too. Because our parasympathetic nervous system, what you'll hear us refer to as the brake pedal, that is what moves food along. It's called our rest and digest system. It gets food absorbed through our GI system and then out the other end. If we are not in a balanced, well-rounded state, neurologically speaking, if we're in more of a gas pedal, fight or flight, stress, anxiety, fight or flight mode, that is going to mean that digestion, as well as immune system and focus and energy and sleep and so many other things, those things are gonna go on the back burner and we're gonna have probably this struggle and so many more. So what we do neurologically speaking is do some scans to measure and track that and then put together a care plan with adjustments to calm that stress pump the brakes, get that nervous system back into balance mode and get that kid back on the healing path. So we need to address both of them, right? We need to address the nervous system. We need to make sure our, our GI system and our nutrition is cleared up. Um, and if you're missing that piece of it, neurologically speaking, send us a message. Let's get scanned. Let's figure out if that is a piece of what's going on in your kid's story and see if we can get them heading in a better direction.